Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, thank you for being with us on the program today. A special edition, some really interesting topics we're going to be talking about during the program today. One of our guests is Thomas Miller. He's been a student of Unarius since he was 14 years old. At that time, meeting Ernest L. Norman, the founder and teacher of Unarius. Tom has given many lectures on the Unarius principles over his 56 years of study. A frequent media guest, he's been featured in a documentary film. He also has written several books about Unarius principles, including a book of verse, the epic, and a series of lectures, which was published in the book The Keys to the Universe. Tom maintains a website, unariusunited.com, that features Dr. Norman's teaching as well as student testimonials and discussion. With a degree in science and accounting, Tom is the owner of a tax accounting firm in Portland, Oregon. Again, the website is unariusunited.com. And joining us on the program once again is Robert Maxim, author of the Legacy Series, Robert was born in 1957. The author experienced several sleep time visits to other worlds as a child, witnessed countless alien craft. These visions continue to date in both wake and sleep states. He studied concert piano starting at age three, but changed his calling to science following the visionary experiences. Legacy series is the culmination of these experiences shared with the world for the first time. The author spent 40 years studying science, religion, and science of life, presented by Dr. Ernest L. Norman, validating his vision starting on July 3rd of 1973. The website for Legacy is rgaten.com, R-G-A-E-T-A-N.com. I'll give you a lot of information there. You can link on to both Thomas's and Robert's websites by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. All the information is there. If you're listening, there is a video of version of this at YouTube. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, go to the YouTube or video section on there, hit the icon, you'll be able to watch what we're going to do on the program today. Thomas, welcome to the program for the first time. Robert, as always, welcome back. Great to have both of you with us on the show today. Hi, Rick. It is Certainly. great to have everybody with us on the program today. And Thomas, for the video, you'll see a, a picture of him, and he's got some, some graphics, some slides he's going to show during the course of the program. And Robert is with us full screen on this as well. And, and Thomas, I will, uh, I'll start with you. Let's talk a little bit about Ernest, uh, Ernest L. Norman, Dr. Norman, the founder and teacher of Unarius. Give us a little background on him. We've talked before with, with Robert about him. Uh, give us some of background, and then we'll talk about the experience you had with him and actually meeting him. Well, this was very unique, Rick. Uh, I actually met Dr. Norman and interacted with him for the last 11 years of his life. Uh, I went to his house many times. But what I really wanted to talk to uh, the folks about is uh, my first meeting with him when I was 14 years old, give you a little bit of background. When I was 14, my mother bought a book called Voice of Venus. I got through about a third of that book. And then all of a sudden I bellowed out, out loud, this is what I've been looking for all my life. And here I'm 14 years old, <laughs> you know. And uh, it just hit me that this was the, the thing I've been looking for as a way of life, a, a form of living and expressing myself. A little bit of prefacing there was that uh, when I was four or five, six years old, I was in a child abuse uh, situation. And when I would become physically uh, threatened, I would close my eyes and I would see this beautiful sun-like beautiful ball of energy in front of my mind and I was mentally told to walk into that ball of light and I would be protected and I would do that and I would felt at peace and and uh, everything was okay no matter what they did to my body my mind was in that beautiful radiant ball of sun-like energy well this happened quite often when I was four or five or six years old uh, now, saying that, when I got that book, I wrote Dr. Norman, they were living in Santa Barbara and we were in L.A., and I told them uh, that I just really love the science that, that I'm getting from the voice of Venus. However, uh, I had uh, been taken out of school when I was in the sixth grade, and, or seventh, seventh grade, sorry, and uh, I didn't know uh, how to read that much. 
And Dr. Norman uses very big words. So I wrote him and I said, yeah, I love this, but do you have a children's book? <laughs> you know? That, and, yes. uh, and they wrote back and said, don't worry about it. You will learn in your sleep state how to read and uh, understand these things. Let me tell you, Rick, in two weeks, I was reading those books, all the big words, and understanding them. Wow. And it, I had no education within those two weeks. And so it was a miraculous thing. And so anyway, they invited us to, uh, my mother and I, to their home in Santa Barbara. We were living in Glendale. And so, we, of course, we went. Now, the first thing I saw as they met us at the door, Dr. Norman opened the door, I immediately saw this beautiful sunlight radiating ball of light that was him. He disappeared in my mind. I'm 14 years old, remember? Yes. And, and uh, he actually disappeared. Now, uh, this is, uh, you know, in another world expression, but this was true. And so as we walked into the, uh, the house, and he sat down in the chair, and we sat on the couch opposing uh, him, uh, he uh, started just talking to us. He didn't go into any trance. He didn't do any kind of manipulations, mantras, or meditation things, or, you know, uh, calling on the angels or whatever. He just started talking to us. And what he did, he started telling me about my personal life, things that happened in my life that nobody knew except me. I hadn't even told these things to my mother. So she's hearing it for the first time. She's sitting on the couch next to me listening to this. And all this time, all I see is this beautiful sun radiating these energy rays. And it wasn't it was like the rays were coming slowly at you, you know, and just permeating you. And this transcendent feeling was there. Uh, it was just a beautiful, uh, loving energy that was coming to us. And all during the whole meeting, this happened. And yet, I felt like, oh yeah, this is normal. You know, I wasn't any, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't. Uh, uh, feeling like this was weird because I recognize this ball of light that I saw when I was four, five, and six during the abuse years. Okay. So that's just what I recognize. That I am actually meeting that ball of light that helped me through those years. So I recognized it, and it was normal to me. Okay, so then he, what did he do? He started telling me about things in my personal life in this life and he would say uh, things like what well, you had a friend when you were nine years old and he named him he named his name Greg he described him perfectly physically he had sandy hair it was a little chubby and it was just a little taller than I and this was just I'm telling you, nobody knew, nobody knew to tell him these things. And so he said, you know, one time you guys got a box of cigars and you went down in the basement and you went, <laughs> you smoked the cigars and you went, you know, turned blue, green and orange, you know, and, and, and nobody knew about that, Rick. Nobody knew about it at all, ever. I never told my mother or anybody ever. And then he went on and he says, "You uh, and during the winter time, you were riding your bike down this steep hill, and uh, the bike skidded and ran into a parked car, and you actually flipped the bike and your scythe over the tire part of the car, landed on your keister." He described the car. He described the color, and the shape of the car, and the. Uh, the bicycle, he described the bicycle. It was just a small bike because I was only nine. But he says, you never told anybody. And I said, no, I didn't tell anybody because I was so embarrassed. And I really wasn't hurt. So I didn't tell anybody. But then he says, "You, uh, when you were five or six years old, uh, you saw everybody. You know, I had 
three uh, brothers and sisters, and they were all going to school. And I wanted to go to school. So what I did, I saw that all their teeth had come out, so they were going to school. So I took a pair of pliers oh, and pulled no. out my teeth out. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I told everybody, well, I got smashed in the mouth. <laughs> and that's how the teeth got uh, knocked out. And, he, and I said, well, now can I go to school? And, uh, and nobody knew about that except Dr. Norman. You know, he, he said those things. And then the... Uh, uh, the other thing that uh, was really important was that he said, Tom, now I'm telling you these things about your personal life that nobody knows so that you will believe me when I start telling you about your past lives. So he started telling me a bunch of past lives that I lived. One of them was, uh, he said you were a scientist in the 16th century and you tried to invent the perpetual motion machine. But he says, like everybody else's in that time, yours failed too. <laughs> so then he said, uh, there was a life about, well, this was 1960. So he said about 100 years ago, so it should have been about 1860, that uh, uh, you lived in the French Swiss Alps. And he said, uh, he started asking me some questions. He said, uh, you know, what do you think about uh, golden-haired women with pigtails. And I said, I really am very much attracted to that. And he said, what do you think about the name Frontenac? And I said, hey, I got a watch. It's called Frontenac, and I love this watch. Mm. And he says, well, what do, you think, what do you think about dogs, especially huskies? And I said, I love huskies. It's my favorite dog. And I, what I love to do is, uh, you know, bury my face in their fur and just, it was like a, a, a blanket type of a thing. And he says, well, I'll tell you, you were in the winter, you were going to your wedding in front, not France, France. And uh, you were going across a, a very treacherous uh, mountain trail and the sled slid off of the side of the mountain and you fell down and at the midpoint there, you punctured your your back right back uh, lungs on your on your back on a twig on a heavy twig of a tree, and you died there. But the main thing is that the huskies that fell down with you actually huddled around you while until you died, and this is why you love to rub your face in their fur is because they were keeping you warm until you died. Now, Thomas Miller is our guest on the program. I don't mean to interrupt it, I will, for just a second to, to give you the, the information. What Thomas is talking about, you'll find great information at unariusunited.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can link on Thomas Miller, our guest on the program. If you just joined us, Robert Maxim, author of the Legacy Series, is with us as well. Tom has got some slides he's going to show us. And Tom, whenever you want to show those, just let us know, and then we will see those on the screen. And if you're listening to the program, uh, go to our website, the YouTube channel, which you can get get to by going to the website, and you'll see all the pictures. And we've got a picture up now of uh, of Dr. Norman. This really was a life-altering afternoon for you, wasn't it, the, the time you spent the first time in meeting with Dr. Norman? Well, it was very transcending life-changing indeed uh, it totally changed my life it actually saved my life uh, to tell you the truth because i did not have a functional family as i kind of iterated yes. and uh and uh so i uh actually was kind of floundering around about you know what direction of life i should take this solidified that so anyway uh, <clears throat> excuse me, continuing the story, uh, he said that you were going to your, uh, to your wedding. And what do you think about the word, uh, the name Inga? And I said, I love Inga, you know, the word. And he said, well, that was the name of your potential wife. And she, was, she had golden pigtails. And she was waiting at the church, <clears throat> waiting for you to get there. And you never got there. And... Uh, so that was one experience. And then 
he says, have you ever had a pain in your back there? And I said, yes, all my life. But periodically, I would have a like a knife being stabbed in the right part of my lower back here, and I would lose my breath. I couldn't breathe. And it would you know, be for two or three minutes before uh, it would go away. And he said, well, that's where the twig went in. And get this. He says, now, Tom, you will never have that pain again. And I'm telling you, all these years, I have never had that pain again. It left you that day. It, I was healed of that just by uh, making the realization of this past life, which is one of the principles that he taught, was that healing can take place by recognition of these various past life experiences. Anyway, if you're looking at his picture right now, yes. he has a high forehead. And when he spoke and was channeling, we call it channeling, that forehead actually generated a big, large welt. And it, it, it actually like became very tender and everything. And uh, it was a very phenomenal experience. It was, a, it was like... A, you know, real life <laughs> change in the, in the person's body, Yes, you know. So it was a fantastic experience there. And since uh, that reading, he gave me all kinds of uh, uh, things where he says, well, I see you live most of your lives in Italy, you know. And then he says, you lived one life in England where you were a lawyer and you became chancellor in that life. So... Uh, it uh, eventually uh, arrived where he, he said that I was Thomas More. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It, it's not big in who you were, really. I mean, that's not important. But this particular one was important because of the karma or the energies, negative energies that I had experienced in that lifetime what's being carried over into this lifetime that's why the abuse was taking place right. so anyway <clears throat> when we talk about reincarnation uh, he was proving the principle uh, that uh, you know we have within our psychic anatomy soul or spiritual body or whatever you want to call it uh, these experiences from these past and we are reliving them all the time and uh, uh, this was he was proving this principle to me. However, all of it was very normal, and uh, to me, I wasn't surprised. And it was just say, "Oh yeah, 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 sure, okay, I understand that," you know, that type of thing. Then when I left his house, that it was like on a hill. I went down at the bottom of the hill, and I, I started thinking, "Did that happen?" <laughs> Did it, you know, was that real? That, yes. I mean, I yes. actually started questioning myself. So after leaving his presence, incidentally, he radiated a tremendous amount of heat. Actual, uh, you would be around him and he would be, uh, you would be ex per perspiring. You know, it was so much of a radiation coming from his aura. Uh, he was really uh, a tremendous uh a light bulb, let's put it that way. Right. And, yeah. And uh, he he was just fantastic. And uh, he could read your thoughts. And uh, he, w he had a, a wife uh, named Ruth. She would go down to the store down the hill to pick up supplies. And she would come back. And I was there. Incidentally, I was uh, invited back many times to their house. And I was there, and she would come back into the house, and he would start to tell her you know, who she met, what she did, what she said. Uh, you know, I mean, he, he uh, w was right there with her and, and could tune in to exactly what she was doing. It was phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> it was a, a tremendous experience. Boy, and how intense this had to be. You are a teenager and going through this experience. You're, you're listening to This Week in America, our guest in the program, uh, Thomas Miller and Robert Maxim with us as well from the Legacy Series. I, about five minutes left in the program. It's going by way too quickly. I'm sure this will be Whoa. part one. Yeah, about part one of this discussion. I, 
Tom, what all did this mean to you? I mean, how do you even sort out exactly what you, the information that you, you were just given? Well, in the teachings, it says you must be preconditioned to uh, uh, accept anything in life. What we mean by preconditioned is that you live uh, lives in between earth lives and you go to school. And you set up cycles and you set up things you're going to do uh, in the earth world in your next earth life. Well, a lot of these things, uh, would, like I said, was so very normal to me, I accepted it 100%. That's why I yelled, bellowed out when I saw the Boys of Venus, because it was something that was so very familiar. So the reason uh, that I understood that is because I was preconditioned. I learned those things right. uh, uh, before. And therefore, my life did change dramatically. Uh, I started studying and have been continually studying the principles of, uh, you know, as we might get into that later on, but uh, or maybe some future time. But uh, it's all very vital, and it isn't just me. It's all of us have that potential because of the evolutionary process that Dr. Norman teaches uh, we all go through. You know, that's amazing. And Robert, we've we've touched on some of these areas before. Just give me some of your thoughts and what Tom is talking about. I know you've had extensive conversations with him, but to actually have met uh, uh, Dr. Norman and to, to get these these teachings from him and get this information, what, what are your thoughts on what Tom has said so far? Well, I have my own uh, personal experience in it all where <clears throat> I actually... Uh, visited um, El Cajon, California, where the uh, Unary Center was at the time, and I didn't know it existed. I stood in a corner, and just to cut it short, and I was looking in the direction of the building, and I felt like I had to go there. Uh, I was just captivated. I was looking in that direction. I did not see the building, but I was looking at it, and what a surprise it was uh, when I came back, when I when I learned about Unarius, I drove back to El Cajon. Guess what my feeling was when I drove by that corner, and then I turned right down the next street, and there was the building. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that was that was the first experience, and of course, the first person I met when I walked through the door was my beloved brother Thomas Miller, and I as as soon as I saw him. I felt like I knew him forever, and uh, the years that have uh, that have passed, we have both uh, collaborated with one another. Uh, the different lives we've lived, and we still do. Oh, we still do. We get on the phone, we can't hang up. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure of that. And I would, Tom, is this? And in, in we've we've sensed this in talking to to Robert before. This is sort of an evolutionary thing, isn't it? Where this just, it's not like, okay, this is the knowledge, it ends, now I'm going forward. I get the impression probably every day you'll learn something. Oh, indeed. A uh, tremendous amount. It depends on the stimulation that we have or, or how ambitious we are in becoming a better person. Because that's what Unarius is about. It's a self-betterment program that, actually entails many millions of years for each one of us. Nobody's immune to these principles that Dr. Norman teaches. Tell me about Unarius, what that stands for. Unarius stands for Universal Articulate Interdimensional Understanding of Science. The operative word there, I believe, and it's important to me, is interdimensional, which means that we are just not one-dimensional beings. In fact, this is the least of us, of who we are. Uh, it's like the tip of the iceberg. The real soul is unseen. We are I'm out of time. I've got a minute or so left here, and we were wanted to talk about some of the, the, the precepts of the teachings, and we'll talk about that in, in part two. The website, the information that Tom was talking about is unariusunited.com. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to that. And, Tom, I know this is a, a big responsibility that you have. And talk a little bit as we end the program uh, how important this website is where people can go get information and, and, and discuss it with others. Well, we believe it is the center of Dr. Norman's teachings now. 
Uh, we have all of his teachings up on the site. And we recommend that uh, if somebody is interested, that is the opportunity that they can go to learn about themselves and life in general, what it truly is all about. It isn't just the surface physical life. We have a tremendous uh, life cycle, which uh, we, we need to master, and we take many thousands of lifetimes to do that, and that we are entire energy beings. So this uh, site will give a, a definite general uh, teachings of Dr. Norman. And actually, we have his voice up on the site in many different lessons. It's an excellent website. It's unariusunited.com. I'll ask each of you in maybe 30 seconds each. Tom, from a standpoint, when you're able to, to help people and you direct people to the website and, and suddenly they see their live lives in, in a different way, What's that feeling like when, when people have a better understanding of why they're here? Well, it gives you purpose. It gives you the reason why you are here. It gives you the reason why God exists, if you want to call him God, which we don't. We use the word infinite, but it's interchangeable. And uh, it actually gives a person a security, a knowledge that they have a future, and that they have a perp reason that, 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 that they can learn anything they wish, be a musician, a mathematician, a scientist, or a piano player, or a singer, or anything you want. Right. This is our purpose. And Robert, from your standpoint, when you talk with someone in all the times you've been on the program, when people follow up and go to your website and entertain by legacy, but learn from it as well, or go to Unarius United, What's it like when you're sharing what's been life-altering for you with others? Well, I always have the sense that life is a mission of overcoming. Uh, I have come here with uh, preconditioned knowledge from the higher worlds. Uh, that knowledge is now exercising itself on this dimension and going through different lessons, different experiences, that teach me all the time uh, how to be on the pathway to infinity. Now, um, I've had to come to terms with a lot of uh, issues that I had in life that I, I thought they were perfectly normal. Uh, but as the years have come by and the studies have uh, transpired, of course, those have been what I want to, uh, what I could say is a game changer, and it can be a game changer to anyone else that puts forward the effort to actually study, be honest with themselves, and understand what infinity and energy is is all about. Um, and any anything that I can share along those ends, uh, it's another reason why I'm here. And the Unaris United website is just that; it is a center for sharing. Uh, the teachings of Dr. Norman, but also our own lessons learned, our own overcomings. And the one thing about uh, Robert is that his book, Le Legacies, uh, is just his personal journey. We all have our own personal journeys. Mm -hmm. He we is finding out about his, and we are all finding out about our own, through our own uh, learning and experiences, right. you know. Well, it's fascinating. Thomas Miller, one of our guests on the program, the website with all the information we've talked about, unariusunited.com. And, of course, back with us on the program, Robert Maxim, and he's talking about going through and, and sorting out all the elements of his lives. We've shared so much of that on the program and past shows with Robert. Uh, you'll find it on a website this week in America.us by going to the iTunes channel there or going to YouTube and, and watching and listening to those past programs. The website for Legacy is Argaten, G A E T A N dot com. Legacy uh, series available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all of the usual places. I'm sure this is part one because so much more that we would like to talk about. And I thank Robert for bringing Thomas on the program this time, Thomas Miller and Robert Maxim. Gentlemen, one by way, way too quickly. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Rick, for having us. You're welcome. Absolutely. All the information available at the website thisweekinamerica.us. Stay tuned. We're right back after these messages. <laughs> 